So you all were asked which character's origins you'd like to see next, and I'd say the vote for our favorite evil genius was unanimous. There are so many versions of Dr. Eggman across all Sonic media, so of course, we're gonna crack them apart and make an omelet out of it. Man, shut your Dr. Eggman's definitive origins are just as mysterious as our boy Sonic's. As part of Mentoctober, let's dive into the true origins of this dastardly supervillain. This is the Talkman Takeover. Let's first go back to the original Sonic trilogy, where we see the first appearance of Eggman. Happy 30th, by the way, Eggman. No one really gives you any fanfare for this. Anyway, in the first Sonic the Hedgehog title, the Japanese manual only states that the mad genius Dr. Eggman is on a quest to locate the Chaos Emeralds after learning of their existence. While Sonic is visiting South Island, he sets out on a journey to thwart Eggman's nefarious plans, and no that's pretty way. much it. I can't but is that all we this. truly know about Eggman in the main timeline of the games? No. There's a little bit more, but we wouldn't find this out until 2001 on the release of Sonic Adventure 2. Before we get into that, I think I should take the time to clear the air on Dr. Eggman's proper name. Why is he called Eggman now and not Robotnik? Why are people still debating this after all these years? When the character was originally conceived, the round shape of the Doctor was the major influence on the name they decided in Japan, which was Dr. Eggman. The name Eggman was used for the Japanese lore, but the overseas market made the official name Dr. Ivo Robotnik to further highlight his ability to create robots. This is why we still see egg-themed levels and branding in the original games. On the flip side, Japan wouldn't use Robotnik for the character until some of the Western cartoons were being localized for the region. This led to a unification of both names during the release of Sonic Adventure in 1999, with Eggman being used as the character's moniker. I am Dr. Robotnik, the greatest scientific genius in the world! Whatever you say, Eggman! Looks like they're going the same route for the Sonic movies as well, with Robotnik being his true name as he slowly morphs into the Eggman that we're used to within the video game continuity. Now that that's out the way, we move on to Sonic Adventure 2, where we get a teensy bit of character lore for Eggman with the introduction of Gerald Robotnik and Maria Robotnik, Eggman's grandfather and cousin respectively. The game's plot is heavily centered around Gerald Robotnik's ultimate creation, Shadow the Hedgehog, and tragic events occurring at the Space Colony arc 50 years prior, which leads to the arrest and execution of Gerald Robotnik and the death of Maria. To this day, we're not exactly sure how these events related to Dr. Eggman himself, or if he's even met his grandfather and Maria. While the credits roll, Eggman mentions that he looked up to his grandfather and wanted to be just like him. Which, depending on how y'all feel about our boy Gerald here, I'd say he achieved that goal. After this game, we haven't really gotten much else about Eggman's origins, and similar to Sonic, I feel these types of plot points don't exactly matter to Sonic Team. I'm all for their origin stories being a mystery, but I would love a few hints about their lives before being arch nemeses. Speaking of which, it's worth mentioning that during the creation of the original Japanese Sonic plot in the early 90s, Sega of America decided to westernize the origin story into something a little more complex. Since Mentok already covered most of this in his origin video on Sonic, which you should definitely check out if you haven't, I'm going to give the short version of this as it would be pretty important to other forms of Sonic media later on. To market the release of the original Sonic game, a promotional comic was created for release in certain publications, depicting a character known as Dr. Ovi Kintabor. Kintabor was a friendly scientist who attempted to use an invention called the Retroorbital Chaos Compressor which would utilize the Chaos Emeralds to absorb all the evil in the world. He befriends Sonic, who stumbles upon his lab, and it's Kintabor who creates his iconic frictionless red and white shoes. Of course, this all goes to shit when the Chaos Compressor backfires after Kintabor spills his drink on it, causing all the evil to enter the good doctor, transforming him into the evil egg-shaped doctor, Dr. Ivor Robotnik. This backstory would eventually be dropped altogether. But we all know that the Sonic multiverse doesn't stop here. It's time to get into the juicy stuff, y'all. I'm gonna blow the dust off the 90s Saturday morning Sonic cartoon aptly named Sonic the Hedgehog, though it's known in the fandom as Sadam for short. This would be the cartoon that would depict Dr. Robotnik as a ruthless leader, taking a much darker approach to his character. In this universe, he's known as Dr. Julian Robotnik, and at the beginning of this series, has total control over the planet Mobius for 10 years, with Sonic and his friends pushing back against his rule as the resistance group, the Freedom Fighters. Julian Robotnik was in fact the understudy of a wizard 
named Nagus, who taught Julian of a mysterious dimension known as the Void. And in an act of treason, Julian betrays Nagus by sending him into the Void and sealing him within. Robotnik then goes on to become Warlord Julian, who fights for King Acorn during the conflict called the Great War. At the end of this war, King Acorn, who is Princess Sally's father by the way, intends to dismantle the army and proposes that Julian leads the Ministry of Science. Now, as you probably guessed, Julian is plotting to oust our boy King Acorn here with his nephew Snively, and in the near future, he does exactly that, transforming a majority of the population into robots to do his bidding. The exception of this were all the children who fled into the nearby forest to escape, eventually becoming the individuals that form the Freedom Fighters. While this show never saw more than two seasons, the head writer of the show Ben Hurst has said they intended for a deeper backstory for Robotnik, documenting him traveling to the current time in Mobius from the past. The twist would be that Mobius is actually Earth in the very distant future, with Robotnik and Snively coming from the year 2200, before the animals ruled the Earth. So it's like futuristic sci-fi on top of sci-fi. I've always wondered how far they planned on taking this series, as a lot of the plot points seem way ahead of their time, before TV executives realized that children care about storytelling in their cartoons. Now let's move on to the huh, Archie comics. Nothing against these comics, but there's just so many of them. Longtime viewers of this channel know we make any excuse not to read them. So in these comics, there are actually two incarnations of Dr. Robotnik. So let's start with the first one and work our way down this rabbit hole without confusing ourselves. The original Robotnik in the Archie comics is born as Julian Kintabor of the House of Ivo. The parents of Julian are from two separate human tribes on the planet Mobius, one being part of the Overlanders tribe, and the other of the humans that live in Station Square, the city where Sonic Adventure takes place. The Overlanders are four-fingered humans, who at one point were the dominant species in Mobius, back when it was called Earth over 3,000 years ago. Okay, I'm sidetracking here, but listen to this. The Overlanders fought in a huge war called the Great War, with mutated creatures that were created from genetic bombs that alien invaders dropped on the planet. These creatures were animals that possessed a huge amount of human DNA, transforming into the anthropomorphic creatures that rule over Mobius in the present day of the comic. Yes, this is the origin story of the ancestors of all the Sonic characters in the Archie comic. Wild. Anyway, so Robotnik grew up among the Overlanders near the present day, where he plotted for greatness at an early age. Through sabotage and manipulation, he steps on all the Overlanders that gets in his way, and he even went as far as using living humans to test his war machines. Once the Overlanders figure out his nefarious deeds, they intended to imprison him, with Julian fleeing into the Badlands instead. There he is discovered by Jules, Sonic's father in the Archie comics, and Sir Charles, Sonic's uncle. They bring him back to King Maximilian Acorn, who welcomes Julian with open arms as he agrees to fight for the king against their opponents, the Outlanders. Do you see how my boy Julian is playing 5D chess here? From there the plot unfolds similarly to the Saddam cartoon, with Julian usurping the kingdom and making Mobius his own, transforming most of the characters into robots while he's at it. From there the series progresses with Sonic and the Freedom Fighters taking on Robotnik's evil dictatorship in a story arc known as Endgame. We're in the no, not that one. This Robotnik has one final clash with Sonic, attempting to use his weapon, the Ultimate Annihilator, to take Sonic down. Turns out his nephew Snively sabotaged the damn thing, and Robotnik's particles scatter into the wind, killing off this version once and for all. So where does the other Robotnik come in? Well, while the Freedom Fighters are rebuilding Mobius after defeating the original Robotnik, another mysterious being begins interfering with the planet. They discover the being is an entity known as Robo-Robotnik, an alternate version of their own Robotnik from another universe. So now that we opened up the multiverse, the plot goes crazy. In Robo-Robotnik's universe, he actually manages to defeat Sonic, but of course, this wasn't enough for this version of the Doctor. He goes after Sonic and the Freedom Fighters in the main universe, and unlike his own world, he's quickly thwarted, his robot body destroyed in the process. Unbeknownst to Sonic and his friends, Robotnik has the ability to transfer his consciousness from his robot body and into a body made in the likeness of Dr. Eggman from the adventure game that were released around that time, eventually changing his name fully to Dr. Eggman. This becomes the Eggman that's seen in the comics until they were discontinued in 2017.
So I hope that origin story didn't make your head spin, but you probably are starting to realize why I avoid the Sonic Archie comics. The next few forms of Sonic media will be a little less in-depth with Dr. Eggman's backstory, but I think there's some interesting bits here to discuss. First up is the Sonic the Hedgehog manga that I've never really talked about before. It was published by Shogaku Yonensei in the early 90s as a standalone story. In this story, Dr. Eggman actually takes an interest in Sonic himself rather than the Chaos Emeralds or other sources of power. He's interested to figure out what makes Sonic tick and how he's able to harness the powers of Sonic for his own use. I may talk about this entire manga in a separate video as it details Sonic living a normal life as a hedgehog named Nikki, but also being able to transform into the hero Sonic the Hedgehog as a totally different identity. It's fun stuff. And I think the obsession that Dr. Eggman has over Sonic's power is kind of alluded to in the current movie series. Then there's the 90s cartoon Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, a more lighthearted take on the series with a more slapstick Bugs Bunny versus Elmer Fudd type of relationship between Sonic and Robotnik. He has no true origin story in this cartoon to speak of and pretty much has a different plan to take over Mobius in each episode, which is aptly thwarted by Sonic and Tails every time. He's joined by Scratch, Grounder, and Coconuts as his main robotic sidekicks as he strives for a higher level of villainy. Funny enough, there's one episode called Best Hedgehog that dives into his past as a teenager, where he attempts to win over his crush, Lucinda, at his high school. He goes as far as trying to off the man that she has a crush on, and you know, he's somewhat successful. It's revealed that he held this man captive for decades until Sonic was able to free him. Also, his mom appears a lot in this show, and it's very unnerving. We also have Sonic Underground, another cartoon from the 90s, with this version of Robotnik being very similar to the Saddam cartoon. Though we have less of an idea of where he comes from, he overthrows Sonic's mother, Queen Alina Hedgehog, from the throne and takes control of Mobius. He leaves the nobility of the planet alone during his rule, allowing them to pay tribute for lenience. Most of his time in the show is spent making sure his rule is uncontested searching for Queen Alina and her three children in the process to avoid a prophecy of overthrowing his dictatorship. The show was cancelled pretty quickly, so unfortunately, we never see that prophecy come to pass. Sonic X is an anime that was released in 2003, which for the most part sticks pretty close to the lore of the games at the time. There are slight variations throughout, but character-wise, the personalities of the main cast are pretty consistent with the games. Dr. Eggman in particular is still Sonic's arch nemesis with no origins to truly discuss. In the very first episode, he uses a machine that utilizes the Chaos Emeralds to perform Chaos Control, which transports the entire main cast to an alternate dimension, or planet Earth in this case. They spend most of the time saving the day from Eggman's plans while trying to find a way home. Season 2 of this show takes the story from Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and adapts them into its own story arc, where we learn that Dr. Eggman was actually born on planet Earth where the main cast is stuck. This revelation occurs around the same time his grandfather, Dr. Gerald Robotnik, is introduced into the story, since he's the scientist who created Shadow the Hedgehog on the Space Colony arc. Though it isn't exactly explained how Dr. Eggman ended up in Sonic's world, the assumption is that he was somehow transported there at a very early age. By the way, this is unrelated, but I find it funny that they call him Dr. Huevo in the Spanish dub of this. Trudillos, atrapalo. Shout out to my Latin viewers out there. I want to give an honorable mention to a video by Mugi Mikey that was released a few years ago called His History Revealed, a Dr. Robotnik biography. It's an extremely well done narration of how Eggman becomes the mad scientist he is by taking some inspiration from a lot of the lore I've presented to you and adding its own creative liberties. It goes into the tragic relationship with his father and past romantic relationships that slowly tear apart this innocent human being into a psychotic villain. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. It's at 1 million views at the recording of this video, so I suppose everyone else liked it too. Last but not least, let's talk about the newest incarnation of Robotnik from the Sonic movie played by Jim Carrey. In the movie, Sonic flees to planet Earth by using a special set of rings that allows him to transport to different worlds. Heading to Earth at a young age to avoid mysterious captors, he stays hidden from the human race for quite a few years spending a lot of time in isolation using his supersonic speed. One day, in his frustration, he releases a significant amount of energy, knocking out the power grids in Green Hills, Montana, 
which has the government step in to investigate. They hire Dr. Robotnik to resolve the issue quickly. And while his origins aren't explicitly shown, Robotnik has a tendency to monologue a few times, revealing more about his past. We learn that he grew up as an orphan and was bullied in school, which explains his distaste for family and other human beings for that matter. After being punched in the face by a bully, he enacts revenge by utilizing the power of robots, which left the bully eating through a straw for an entire year. From there, he obtains five PhDs and is employed by the US government due to his godly talents in robotics. In the course of this movie, we start to see Robotnik grow even madder during his pursuit of Sonic, doing whatever is necessary to find the source of his speed. In their final confrontation, he's knocked into a ring portal, transporting him to a mushroom world where he completes his transformation into Dr. Eggman, shaving his head bald and beginning his journey to find a way home. The next movie comes out in April 2022, and I'm really looking forward to see where they take this version of our beloved Doctor, as Jim Carrey plays a convincing version of him, especially in his final scene of the movie. Well, that's all I have, kiddos. Which version of Dr. Eggman was your favorite? Leave it in the comments below and be sure to let me know what character origin you'd like to see next. And a shout out to Sonic Retro for archiving all this useful information. If you want to dig deeper into the Sonic lore, I'd definitely start there. Anyway kiddos, stay tuned. Mentoctober is almost over, but the content is still flowing. And don't worry, you'll be seeing more of me soon.